Hey guys, it's Elena, and I wanted to show you today how I made an agate slice in Procreate on my iPad. And this is a canvas that is 6,000 by 4,800 uh, pixels. And I'm going to start out using my Copic BG color palette, which is in my amazing alcohol ink uh, set of brushes. And I will be primarily using that brush set in this tutorial. So I'm starting out with the XL blended brush stroke and I'm just gonna go ahead and do a big sweeping stroke across the corner. This is gonna be an agate slice that goes uh, on the corner and is sort of cut off by the corner so it's not a full uh, circle. It's more like the edge of an agate slice. So I'm starting out with this dark blue and just making a couple of strokes. I wanted some areas that are dark and others that are light, kind of like a real agate slice that has layers and different levels within it. So now I'm gonna go with some green and do the same thing with the same brush. This XL blended brush stroke disperses what's under it, but doesn't completely push it out of the way. So you get kind of a, a watery line underneath where one of the other strokes was. Now I'm going with the blended brush stroke and I'm gonna make a couple of smaller brush strokes in the middle here, which I will blend together in a minute and I'll show you what that's going to be, but I'm just going to do a couple different colors here. So now I'm going to go ahead and take the Liquify Blender brush and just make a sort of a quick large stroke across this entire area that I've just drawn to smear it together and make it um, make it sort of wobbly looking. And I'm going to do the same thing on the edge of this other stroke that I made, the larger stroke on the inside as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and take the blended brush stroke again. And I'm going to darken the edge on the, the outer edge with a very small brush stroke all the way around. Now with the Liquify Blender again, I'm just going to go over a couple of different areas where there's uh, solid lines and just make them a bit more wobbly, like they are melting into the next layer. And I'll just do this strategically in a couple of areas while also leaving some of the harsh lines there for contrast. Now I'm going to grab this dark blue color again and take the blended brush stroke again, adding some more darkening around the edges that I want to be a bit darker. Now again with the XL blended brush stroke, I felt like this area should have a bit more green to it. And now that I'm looking at it again, I'm not sure if I would have put that in there, but it's there for better or worse. I'm going to take the Liquify Blender and blend it through a little bit to make a nice wobbly transition between the, the stroke that I just made and the rest of it. And taking the Heavy Bleed Blender brush, I'm just going to smooth out some of the edges that appeared when I used the Liquify Blender. And 
Now I've got the static brush stroke and the difference between this one and the blended brush stroke is just that it does not push anything out of the way. So it adds some nice edges for layering along this focal point that I'm working on right now, but it doesn't, it doesn't change anything that's already there. It just adds to it. So now I've got the ink pull edger and I'm going to grab that blue again and just add a little bit more darkening along this edge with the ink pull edger. So now that I've got this first layer down, I've added a new layer over top of this and it will be for my metallics. And I'm actually putting my metallics in a couple layers today because there's a lot of them. But I went ahead and chose the lightest gold color from the metallics palette that's included with the alcohol ink. And I chose the metallic ink splatter brush and I'm filling in the white areas with this and it's barely visible because I want to build the metallics up in a couple different colors for this so I just wanted a barely visible almost white base and I'm going to take the metallic ink liner in the same color and just add a few accents along some of the lines I'm not using very much pressure on this brush right now. It's just just barely a little bit of pressure to get these really delicate lines. So now I'm going to go with a little bit of blue and green glitter. So I'm going to choose this almost grayish green color, a little bit like my nails there. And I'm just adding a little bit more with the the uh, metallic ink liner brush and when you're in doubt with um, what colors to use with the metallic brushes then the ones that have a bit more gray in them are always a bit better because this brush can bring out some really um, crazy colors if you choose some bright colors so go with the more subtle colors so now I've chosen a, a blue and I'm just doing the same thing. I'm adding a couple bits of glitter here and there. And I think that I actually added this on a new layer. So the, the white glitter was on its own layer. And now I'm adding this blue and green on a separate layer over top of that. So that it doesn't interact and start to just get all white. So now I've got the ultra fine glitter also in the blue color. And I'm very, very lightly adding just a little dusting of glitter along one of those inner lines, a couple of those inner lines there. So you can see I've got two layers of metallics already, and now I've added a third layer for metallics. And I'm choosing a gold color in my foil liner. And this is where it gets really fun. I'm going to add, I'm going to just draw by hand some little flecks and veins of gold inside of this, the middle of this agate slice. So I'm just using the foil liner to, to make some, some different gold marks in here. And I'm trying to make them all look like they're sort of in the same, going in the same direction. When in doubt with this, just go for a very light touch and then vary the pressure a little bit as you go to get a feel for it.
with the same foil liner brush I'm making a very very light stroke for an extremely delicate little bits of gold along some of these darker lines within the agate slice. I'm just letting the pressure vary ever so slightly in order to get some bigger parts of the line and then some just barely there delicate lines. Adding just a bit more with the metallic ink liner now. Same color along the edge. And now I wanted to have a sort of drippy looking um, yummy gold foil sort of texture around the very edge. You see these coasters that people make with resin that have these amazing gold edges on them. So I was trying to imitate that a little bit. So first I just went along the entire edge with the gold foil brush and then I thickened some areas of it. So if you only have the alcohol ink brush set, you can do everything that I've already shown and you can just leave it like this. This is a you know, perfectly fine looking agate slice um, that you can make if you only have that brush set. But if you have all of my brush sets, I wanted to show you something different that you can do um, with two more of the brush sets that I have uh, for sale in my shop. So one of them is the Terrazzo brush and brush set, and one is the Gold Rush brush set. Um, so in just a second here, I'm going to show you an additional thing that you can do with those brush sets. So yeah, you could just leave it like that, or you can add a new layer. And I'm going to go ahead and select black by double tapping close to the black on my color wheel. And now I'm going to go to my Terrazzo brush set, which is a separate brush set. My Terrazzo creator, and I'm using Terrazzo number six on my new layer. And in the black color, I'm just going to go ahead and add some stone chunks into this these uh, these white areas that I will transform into more metallic looking in just a minute here. So I wanted to have them mostly towards the middle because if you look at agate slices or geodes you can see they're mostly crystals in the middle. So I wanted something that would sort of mimic that. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit towards the outer edge as well, just to keep things interesting, but not too much. So once I'm happy with this layer, I'm actually going to go ahead and move it below the gold foil layer, just because I feel like that looks a little bit better. And then once that is done, I tap the layer and hit alpha lock. And now I'm going to go to my gold rush number two, um, the second edition brush set here. And then I'm going to select foil fill number three. And going to my gold rush color palette, I'm selecting this really light, almost white gold color. And I'm going to go ahead and fill the terrazzo that I just made with this light gold color which just gives another element to this agate slice and to the, the layered metallic look that I wanted. So it's not necessary if you don't have these extra brushes but it does add a lot of interest to it and there's more possibilities if you can even do a couple different colors of foil this way and have it all be overlapping and it can just get really fun. And I've got my 
ultra fine glitter in green and I'm just going to fill in a couple more areas that seemed like they needed it on their own layer. And one last step at the very end here I decided I wanted to add some texture to that really dark area of blue right in the middle there. So I went back to that layer and I went all the way to the bottom of my alcohol ink set and chose add ripple texture and I'm just putting that in there along that line to add some extra ripples in that. So that was my agate slice and I hope you like the tutorial and I hope that you are able to come up with some fun versions of this yourself. And you're welcome to share these in the Facebook group or um, on Instagram with the hashtags Eleni Anson Brushes. And um, let me know how you like the tutorial down in the comments.